definitely, we can't put a, a stereotype on a dollar. I mean, that's why I'm, I'm here today to let us know how important knowledge is over money. Knowledge is the most important thing that we can focus on. Because if you don't have the knowledge, you would never make the money anyway. So my thing is with me, and, say, and I feel uh, Mr. Banner frustration, because I sold 75 million records. And then as a, as a decrease where people say, I wanted to do the right thing. I started doing the right thing. They, they stopped buying my records at a, at a minimum. But what I said was, I'm growing up, I'm mature, and I want to do the right thing. It got to start right now with me. I don't care if they don't buy my because I'm going to keep doing the right thing. I don't care if they don't play my videos. I'm going to keep doing it because I understand somebody has to take a stand for what we're about to build. And I know we are focusing on what's right now, but something has to stop and it has to start right today to say, you know what, we're not focusing on the dollar no more. We are educating. Them. It's something that's more important than music. We don't need to focus on the music. We have to teach these kids how to get into other avenues. I, I'm going to challenge the network and say, you know what, let me go put a financial show, enhance our kids in these communities and see what happens. Because I think that's the most important thing. We have to teach them is other avenues besides music. And when we say we can make other avenues besides music, we can make money financially, doing financial literacy shows, our kids are going to change and say, you know what, I don't care if they don't play my music. If i got to do the right thing, if I have to make the right content, and what he said about Tupac, think about Tupac's songs. Tupac had a lot of songs what he was going through, but he also had the Dear Mama, the uplifting song that really stuck to our community. And I think if we put most songs out like that, we're going to be able to change our community. And we got to teach these kids how to make money besides music. When we do that, the music is going to change. And so I'm going to challenge all these networks that came and all these record companies, let's do some financial shows. Because one thing about athletes and African Americans, we always lose the first go round. So we have that frustration. Every athlete I know have tax problems the first go round or some type of financial problem. So they're angry and they're waiting for that second contract. We got to stop in the music business waiting for that second contract so we can make some changes. We got to teach our kids and we got to prepare them and grow them to be financially successful so they don't have to look back and do the same thing they did back in the past. And that's the only thing God blessed me, saying that go seek that knowledge. And I'm going to teach kids now, I wrote a book, pick up a book. Mm -hmm. Understand that we start reading and, and stop just worrying about right. the music. The music going to sound better to us because now we have the knowledge. Right. Can I briefly just respond? Uh, very quickly. Uh, well, no, I, tonight on, uh, if you look at BET, uh, a two-part series, I challenged the rapper Nelly and T.I. when Nelly swiped the credit card down, the woman's booty is Maximus. And uh, I said, we don't want to reduce your career to that. That's true. Let's, let's be honest because you like uh, the banner, he's a philanthropist. But I said to me, when I saw that the crass commercialization of the woman's body relating back to slavery where they were sold on auction blocks, and as a result of that, hip hop is simply updating the stereotype that is deeply entrenched in American collective unconscious. And then T.I. said, the other rapper said, is it really that deep? I said, yeah, you're a rapper. Do the lyrics, I'm an intellectual, I do the analysis, we both can come together. So I don't justify the visual injustice to which black women in particular are subject in terms of, and I think the images are even worse, so-called, in terms of an influence than the lyrics themselves, because now you're getting past the conscious mind and the images themselves create a universe of expectation and the like. But at the same time, I think that we have to be much more complex, again, to scapegoat Mr. one segment of the society without looking at how we all participate Mr. would be wrong. Thank you. Gentlemen from New York, recognize. And Mr. Chairman, I'm just going to ask one question, and then I'll have to leave. Um, the question is, do you think it is possible to be a positive role model and express yourself with explicit lyrics at the same time? Just go right down uh, the, the line, yes. Well, yes, sir, go ahead. Uh, I always say it to myself, because I come from the streets, and I was able to educate myself and clean my life up. I always say to myself, and that's just me, I said I could be an inspiration but I can teach my son to be a role model. And I think we can't point the finger at hip hop, and we can't point the finger at David Banner. We, 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 we all speaking the same thing. We have to grow to a certain level. Right now, without David Banner being where he at, because I was there one day, I couldn't get to where I'm at right now. I just think that we got to stop uh, stereotyping the whole community because we have to put some balance out there right now. That's the only reason I'm here. I understand where he at, he understand where I'm at, but I'm here to put balance and say that we can do something right and move on and still be successful. But I just think that, yeah, maybe I can't be a role model because I come from the street and I come from that type of music. And I said, I'm sorry for it, but what I am going to do, I'm going to make my kids be role models. My son is not going to do that type of music because I understand that we're destroying our community. I understand that. That's me. Until everybody gets to that level and see that, maybe we don't understand. I went to 12 funerals. 
So I know I see my cousin is a lack of education. It ain't the music. Everybody's a cycle that I'm trying to break. And if I could break that cycle to show kids, put some balance out there, we're going to get to where we need to go at. And none of us wrong. We all have we all have the freedom of speech. Act, and I want people out there to know, if you're making this type of music, if you get to a level, it's like the guy on the street. You say, man, I'm out here hustling. But if I live tomorrow, I want to try to get into something else to better myself. And that's the message I want to give to our kids. What about tomorrow? What we going to do if we survive? And we, we put the tattoos all over our neck. We can't go to corporate America. We can't do what we got to do. We got to understand it might be tomorrow. And that's what I woke up with, having a child. I have a son. I want to be there for him. I want to be there for my kids. I want to be there for my family. And I don't want to be incarcerated. I don't want to be dead. So the kids out there need to get that message, too. They have parental advisory stickers on the records that are parental advisory. But I just think if we put a balance and make it work, we will be able to get to where we need to be at. It's amazing to me that Ludacris can lose his Pepsi deal, and they go and get the Osborne, and that's okay. The truth is, it's only music. Yes, it has an effect on children. Yes, it can influence some people who have that deficit in their personality in the first place. I got the um, Black Caucus. The Black Caucus gave me an award for my philanthropy. And there was a big uprising in Mississippi. And it was strange to me because I told some of the city officials in, in Mississippi, I said, me being a so-called gangster rapper has nothing to do with the fact that I gave away millions of dollars. This is not against the law for me to speak my mind. So why is it that when young black men do something and Morton Scorsese can make movies that talk about bitches and niggas and you are, and it's fine and he can be a role model. The odds going to do the same thing that Ludacris can do, can do when he get his pesky deal taken away. Same thing with Don Imus. We here in front of Congress, but regardless, Don Imus got that million dollar contract to go on to his next business deal. The truth is, we have been being demonized since day one. Of course I can be a role model. Look at Ice Cube. He's one of the most powerful guys in the music industry. What if we would have stopped him in, in, in NWA days? We wouldn't have given him the responsibility to grow. It's the process that makes us men. Yeah, there may be some things that we are not doing right, but Snoop Dogg said the most powerful thing. I wonder why people want to get us in front of Congress and talk to us, get us get in front of the TV and talk to us. Why aren't they men or women enough to pull us to the side and say, maybe you didn't know no better. Maybe your mother was on crack. Maybe you only saw your mother be, being, disrespect, being disrespected and his mother disrespected that mother and it went on and it went on. Nobody, can't, nobody comes to us and talks to us. I talked to Nelly, and that video that he's talking about, I produced, I produced the song to it. And regardless of, yeah, like Nelly said, that was an adult video for adult people. And it's just like everything that we do is always our fault. It's only music. I, I think that, uh, to be very brief, uh, LBJ cussed like a sailor. Richard Nixon, the guy that takes, he's cussing like a man going out of style. They're still the president of the United States. Uh, that doesn't, so yeah, to be quite simplistic and reductionist, but yes, obviously can be a, a, a role model. Look at Richard Pryor, who used cursing in a very creative and interesting fashion, and yet who spoke about some of the most powerful social problems that prevail in American culture. Here's what we have to come to grips with. To be positive uh, is not itself a virtue if it's not accompanied by serious, powerful art that forces us to reflect upon our society. All art should not make you feel good. Some art should get in your face. Some art should be irreverent. The point and purpose of art is not simply to make you feel warm and fuzzy. Some art ought to make you change your bigoted ways. Maybe you're a sexist. Some art can make you think about it. Maybe you're a racist. Some art can make you think about it. Uh, some art then perpetuates the very legacy that it claims to want to resist. Should we be critical of it? Absolutely right. But I think if we're looking for either or black or white answers, that's not it. I think that, yes, as Kanye West, look at the Kanye West who beat 50 Cent in this recent scrimmage for hip-hop supremacy. That's a mark of the maturity and the evolution of hip-hop, whereas 50 Cent, I don't know what you heard about me, but if you can get a dollar out of me, was rejected in favor of uh, a guy singing about Jesus. But even on his song, singing about Jesus, right after that he says, uh, if this manager keeps assaulting me, I will be assaulting him. And after I mess the manager up, I'm going to shorten the cash register up. Even after he's singing, one glad morning, when this life is over, I'll fly away. 
that's the convergence of complexity that manifests our conflicted lives. And I think hip-hop at its best, again, both reflects the pathologies that need to be rooted out and provides an answer through a scalpel of rhetoric to be able to dig into the body of the problem and see what the reality is. And I think at its best, it does that. And I think that, yes, you can be a positive, uplifting figure and not say anything, and you can be a so-called degraded figure who is not positive and say something profound and intelligent. And I think that what we have to do is to push for self-criticism. Misogyny, sexism, homophobia, racism, and the like need to be dealt with, articulated, and wrestled with, regardless of what color they come in, regardless of what body they come in. But at the same time, as Mr. Banner is suggesting, we must not somehow quarantine the problem to young black people who, when they manifest the pathology, are seen as its origin. They are certainly, at the worst, seen as its continuation. Let me thank um, uh, all of you for your, your comments. Let me thank you, Mr. Chairman. And of course, uh, I really feel that this discussion has been a very good one. And uh, Mr. Chairman, I look forward to continuing to work with you in this regard. Thank you. I yield back. The gentleman from Massachusetts is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, very much. Um, Mr. Crump, um, there are a lot, there's a lot of sickness in American society. Right. 